good morning. <clears throat> so, I have been <clears throat> clearing my throat a lot. I have been making a lot of progress on the uh, the Vexus project, and um, I've been thinking about the uh, uh, the Troy project, the the self project. Uh, you are the only project you should ever be working on. Um, I'll link that video. <laughs> my coffee it's a little different uh, so I realized in talking about this recently that <clears throat> the the object the point of understanding yourself is not understanding yourself so that you can make excuses for yourself it's ex extending understanding yourself so that you can make allowances for yourself and so that you can uh, uh, yeah, I don't know I don't know. I don't know if there's a term for it. The only thing I can think of is like the the, the Western term, head them off at the pass. Like there is there are mental avenues that you go down, and when you get in that that hallway, you know you're going to wind up at the end of it. You know when you get in that alleyway, you're going to you know you're going to wind up at the end of that alleyway. And if that's not a place you want to go, you can't you know you can't put up a warning sign at the end of the hallway or at the end of the alleyway that says warning dead end because you're already there. What you need to do is step back to the choices that you made leading up to <clears throat> your entry into that alleyway <clears throat> and say, uh -uh, hang on a minute, you know where this leads. And you can justify it to yourself and say, no, 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 this time it won't. You know, this time I'll, I'll be able to do it. This time I'll be able to indulge just a little bit. And every time you'll reinforce that idea that every time, you know, you'll, you'll begin to know the feeling. It's like, there's a, a chain of events that takes place that results in the thing that you don't want. And so if you start paying attention, you begin to realize what that chain of events is. And as you work it backwards, you start to figure out that you have the ability to, uh, to find out what that early part of the chain is or one of those early events and say, this is not something I want to happen. Um, or, you know, I know where this leads. So, uh, right, self-improvement. So the, the object is not, the object of self-improvement, the object of understanding yourself is not to understand the way, uh, the, all of your alleyways, all of your dead ends for the purpose of saying, oh, well, you know, I was just riding on a rail as soon as I got there. So what could I have done? It was, it was pointless. It was useless. You know, there was nothing I could have done. It's, it's a, it's a avenue for making excuses. Uh, <clears throat> but it's an avenue for making uh, more accurate and scientifically tested uh, <laughs> excuses. That's not what you want to do. Uh, the, the goal is not to <laughs> identify your weaknesses and say, hmm, those are my weaknesses. Oh well, have a nice day. Uh, the idea is that you set up those weaknesses, or once you identify those weaknesses, you set up plans of action. You set up tools in your in uh, that block your path uh, and you use, in my case, a lot uh, technology to prevent um, to prevent yourself from heading down those alleyways, or as a reminder, you know, something to keep your your head focused on the idea or on the fact that if you do this, there's like a 90% chance you're going to wind up doing that. So, <clears throat> so using using the understanding of yourself as a as an avenue to start building roadblocks. Uh, blocking off the things that you don't want to experience or you, uh, blocking off the paths you don't want to travel down and uh, <clears throat> like that that's the goal that's what you should be doing uh, unfortunately people seem to be using it as just a pure excuse like oh well I'm an INTJ therefore I can't do X Y or Z or I'm a type this or I'm a type that so I'm a, I'm a type A personality so I'm just gonna be a jerk to everyone and then I'll say whoa 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 I'm a type A and everyone will be like oh well, I feel better that you were a jerk to me now. Like that doesn't that doesn't work, bro. <laughs> I know we like to think it does, but like explaining why you're being mean to someone doesn't help them feel better. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, maybe for engineers. I don't know. Engineers are different people. Um, <clears throat> but in bringing all this up, I've been rethinking the whole uh, idea of of uh, of Vexus. I still need a better name for it, I think. The the personal organizer thing. Because I knew that there were things that I was bad at, and I knew there were things that I was weak at. And those things, I was like, man, I really wish I could do something. 
and I've, I've talked about this before, but like, um, what is the Microsoft, uh, Cortana, yeah, Microsoft, right? Uh, Cortana, the Cortana app on the phone was probably the closest I got to total, like, instant feedback. I could dump notes out of my head instantly. I could set reminders for myself instantly. I could easily snooze them. Yeah, from my phone uh, with varying degrees of, you know, snooze. Because if you can only snooze something for five minutes at a time and that's the only option you get, you just, you wind up getting annoyed with it. Because if it's like, if it's something that you need to know or you know you're going to be busy for an hour, you're not going to be happy sitting there pressing the five minute thing 20 times as you're constantly interrupted. So there were so few applications that uh, offered that on the market. So <clears throat> I looked at developing my own and then I was like, well, the more I learn about developing well, I, I already had developed on the Android platform, but it's like, why am I centralizing in this this cell phone that hates me and that wants to uh, wants to share my information? It, you know, the cell phone wants to know my grocery list, so it can sell me as a potential customer to um, uh, competitor organizations that want to sell me milk or bread or whatever. You know, it's like I put bread, uh, you know, Alexa, add bread to the to the uh, my shopping list. It's like, okay. Uh, Hey, there's a coupon for that brand you don't buy uh, available. Did you want to try that, band, that brand that you don't buy? Oh, great idea, Alexa. Maybe I will try that. I guess it's 100% targeting ad. It's 100% data collection. And it, it's used to turn you into the product of the service. And you pay for it, too. <laughs> so that was part of the reason why I wanted to get completely offline, or at least, yeah, I'm, it's, it's going to be completely offline. So like this is a pure ESP32 uh, device that's running, uh, let me crank up the brightness here, there we go. It's a pure ESP32 device that's running a um, running at 40 megahertz, uh, yeah, running at 40 megahertz and all it's doing is, uh, it has an integrated charging circuit and this one in particular has a, a lightweight battery and it's a, I think it's a 750 milliamp hour battery, <clears throat> but the idea is this is the newest version, so it's very lightweight, and it has serial input, which is... <laughs> I got, I got like, I got, I got goosebumps when I started doing it. Um, <clears throat> because once you get the serial input figured out, like, it's designed to be a, a hard keyboard, so that you can type, and, and I do. Like, if I'm driving, and I, something pops into my head, it was really easy to be like, hey Cortana, do whatever, you know, record this note. And the only way that I could get close to that was by setting up a, um, <clears throat> by changing to uh, something that was touch typable. So that's the idea behind this is that it's, you can touch type on it very easily because it's got hard buttons that are tactile and you can, you can feel their location with your thumbs. I actually got a 3D printed keyboard face that I put on top of it. And while it was a lot easier on your thumbs, it was a lot harder to touch type because you couldn't quite feel your position with your thumbs automatically. Um, but when I touch type with that, like the interface is set up such that I know where I am if from that home screen. I press, uh, well, I put a shortcut technically, but you know, I, I can press O and then when I press O, it opens a new note. Uh, it's like, it uses Vim keys. So if I press O, it opens a new line beneath the line that I'm currently on. So it opens a new note at the top of the notes list. And then I can type in whatever I need to type, hit enter. And that enters the note and dumps me back out to the clock. <clears throat> If I want a timer, I press T and it jumps to the timer list. Um, and then I operate the timer the, as normal. You can you can set up the timer to be like a 30 minute countdown or the next time, it's like a 24 hour clock, uh, the next time this time occurs. So if it's uh, 3 a.m. and I say at 11, if I say at 4 a.m. do this, then it'll remind me in an hour. Uh, but if I say at 2 a.m. do this, it'll remind me in 23 hours. So it'll go, it'll go around the clock. The next time that that time occurs, it'll make a, it'll set a timer for that. And then you'll get like instant reminders. And the, the snooze feature, uh, being able to hit S and increment by, you know, five minute segments, you can adjust the increment. But the idea is that quick response uh, to be able to quickly get things out of my head, uh, to have reminders for me for events. I'm horrible with, with dates and events. I, I will I will completely forget uh, holidays and and uh, birthdays and things like that. <laughs> and there's really just no way 
I've found that works to do it. So I'm in the process of making a uh, a system that'll build uh, events like yearly events and then weekly events, so that throughout the week, uh, when the day rolls over, it'll check. You know, do I have an event for today? Yes. Okay. What's the event? It's this. Okay. You know, happy birthday. Okay. Well. I want to set a timer so that the next time it's 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or whenever you set the reminder for, um, it'll make an alert and then chirp, chirp, uh, your, your timers, you know, happy birthday. So this is, uh, I think I have this here. This isn't actually close to my, uh, this is in the menu item, so it's not easy for me to get to. I don't have it memorized how to get to it. There we go. Yeah, we're basically stopped here anyways. So that's the, the chirp. This chirp is not actually that loud just because it has a... I think the, the Cezio, the speaker, is, is for a higher voltage or something. Because that runs at 3.3 volts. So I have another one that's a lot louder. And I'm probably going to swap it into this one because... I have a big one with a 25 hour or 24, 2500 milliamp hour battery. And it's... It's heavy and it lasts forever and I don't have to worry about it as much, but with the, since I have um, the serial interface working on this lighter one, I tend to leave it plugged in. So I'll leave it plugged into my computer so I can really quickly pop over to, you know, a, a screen session or a, um, or a putty session and type my keyboard input directly into Vexus and interface with it and you know add a new note you know jot it in there real quick and it's you know again it's wired it's it is not wireless <clears throat> it doesn't transmit anything um the only thing it has is the serial interface and it has to be plugged directly in for that so the idea is to keep keep your ideas uh offline and keep your thoughts to yourself and keep your reminders to yourself and to keep products that you want to buy to yourself for as long as possible because uh you know, you are the product and all that. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's coming along nicely, and it's definitely fulfilling the uh, the niche of uh, targeting my weaknesses. Let's say. So the uh, oh yeah, and I rewired it so I get the LED so that that can blink for me now. So if I set a timer for zero, there we go. So that's the timer, the, where do you see that? The LED blinks, it chirps, and it inverts the screen so that it's a lot lighter. The LED blinking, I'm probably gonna have like an, a red LED or something, something different for that. And then I can press T, and it jumps to the timer that's actually not, or that's, uh, that's out of time. And I can press S to add five minutes to it, or I can press Q to clear it. And then we jump right back out to the date. I, I, I hate to say it, but eventually it's, it's going to be a watch. That's, I've tried, I tried to figure a way around it. It's, there's no way around it. It's, it's going to be a watch. <laughs> All right.